Hi and good day everyone. Welcome back to the third video of reticular activation system. In this video, we will discuss the neurological regulation of sleep-wake cycles. So the neurotransmitter can be classified based on action, as stated here, as well as the based on structures. So I would like to highlight here when I say the monoaminergic, it refers to the dopamine, epinephrine, no epinephrine and serotonin neurotransmitter and when I say the term of catecholamine so it's referred to dopamine, epinephrine and no epinephrine here we will discuss more in depth on the neurological regulation of sleep-wake cycle so there is five components in our brain that regulate the sleep-wake cycles involve the complex interactions between subcortical neuromodulatory neurons which are the, the first extending reticular activating system that present in the brainstem. The second is our hypothalamus that contain two major areas which are the tuberal mammillary nucleus or TMN in the posterior hypothalamus as well as the ventrolateral preoptic neurons in the anterior hypothalamus. The third one is the basal cochrane. The fourth is the thalamus and the fifth is the prefrontal cortex. All these five areas have different types of neurons in terms of which neurotransmitters they release and which also state they are active. So let's go one by one. ARAS or activate, extending reticular activating system and tuberal mammillary nucleus have neurons which are wake on neurons that are active during a wake state through a dorsal and ventral pathway. The dorsal pathway is called the reticular thalamic cortical pathway inhibits the thalamus which facilitates the transmission of sensory information to the cortex. Meanwhile, the ventral pathway, called as reticulohypothalamic cortical pathway, innovates the hypothalamus, basal forebrain, and a site to the cortex area. In the wet active region, locus corollus releases the norepinephrine, rough nuclei release the serotonergic type of neurons, posterior hypothalamus has histamine that play an essential role in wakefulness, arousal, as well as the memory. Besides that, the lateral hypothalamus contains neurons known as orosin. It's a secreting a peptide neurotransmitter. It's believed to innovate and assign the reticular activating system to establish the wakefulness and inhibit the REM sleep. Anterior hypothalamus contains VLPO as well as the basal forebrain can release the gamma amino bitary acid or GABA. These two neurons are active during sleep time. Not only that, GABA will suppress the reticular activity system induced wakefulness. There are also neurons which are active during REM sleep. These neurons, known as pediculopentin tegmental nucleus, as well as the lateral dorsal tegmental nucleus or LTD. These two neurons also referred as the portomesonoencephalotegmental complex, which release the acetylcholine in the REM on neuron. Their activation is responsible for the shift from slow wave sleep rhythm to the higher frequency sleep and awake rhythm. Hypothalamic neurons, VL, these two hypothalamic neurons, which is the ventral lateral preoptic and tuberal mammary nucleus, involved in wakefulness and sleep. So there is interaction among these hypothalamic neurons to switch between the wakefulness and sleep. We will discuss further in the next slide. Monoaminergic and cholinergic producing neurons, as well as the oral scenes, is the key players in the regulation of arousal states. 
among the weight promoting monoaminergy and cholinergic populations are the no adrenergic locus corundus or NC, dopaminergic ventral tegmental area or VTA, as well as the dopaminergic and serotonergic dorsoraphonucleus. Not only that, the cholinergic pedicular and lateral dorsal tegmental nucleus, as well as the basal forebrain neurons. Importantly, monoaminergic and cholinergic neurons are essential for our learning, motivations, attentions, reward, mood, and locomotor behavior in addition to sleep weight regulation. Aminergic activity during wakefulness, as you can see in this blue color here, it will stimulate the thalamocortical circuits. Besides that, it also projects to the ventrolateral preoptic nuclei of anterior hypothalamus to inhibit the GABAergic cells. Please take note that aminergic activity will be decreased during the non-REM sleep and absence during the REM sleep. I would like to discuss here the hypothalamus, which is the critical brain region for regulating the timing and stability of sleep rate cycle because of these two neurons. It's the hypothalamus is only source of certain neuronal systems such as the hypocretin or orosin as well as the histamine. Hypocretin neurons is, uh, is the wake stabilizing neurons that promote the wakefulness during the day. Hypocretin neurons activating the cortical as well as the subcortical neurons indirectly by activating the histamine and wet promoting neurons that are available outside of the hypothalamus such as the acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin and norepinephrine. There is no synaptic projection of hypocretin to the anterior hypothalamus gabaergic region which is the VLPO. However, in contrast, this VLPO as well as the melatonin concentrating hormone inhibit the hypocretinergic cells. So the ventrolateral preoptic neurons or VLPO in the anterior hypothalamus is the nuclei active during non-REM sleep. So it will release the galaninergic and galvergic inhibitor neurons that will inhibit the wakefulness promoting excitatory nuclei such as the locus corundus, rough nuclei, and also the ventral tegmental area and the hypocatenergic system. However, this VLPO will receive the inhibitory synapse from the rough nuclei as well as the locus corundus, but not from the hypocatenergic system. Besides that, it also receives the inhibitory synapse from the limbic system nuclei as well as the suprapyramastic nuclei or known as SCN. Acetylcholine is a cholinergic type of neurons that active during your REM sleep, origin at the basal forebrain, also at the pons and midbrain of your brain stems, which most specify in the LDT neurons as well as the PPN neurons. These neurotransmitters will project to the thalamus, hippocampus as well as the cerebrum. So this cholinergic activity is maximal during your REM sleep and arousal state and absence during your non-REM sleep. Another nuclei of transition that important that you need to know is the VPAC or known as ventrolateral pre-equidectal gray area. So these nuclei are responsible for nuclei of transition from the REM sleep to your non-REM sleep and make sure we are in the sleep state. Another nuclei of transition that you need to know is the suprachiamastic nuclei or known as SCN. So the main stimulus synchronizer of the SCN is the sunlight. The main SCN efferents that are relevant for the sleep recycles are located in the VLPO as well as the hypocretinergic systems. So basically, the SCN will project to the VLPO as an inhibitory, which means that it will inhibit the VLPO during the daylight and relieve the inhibition at the end of the daylight. When the sunlight is gone, the suprachromatic nucleus signal will be decreases 
allowing the onset of NARAMS day by releasing of the galadinergic as well as the gabaragic inhibitory neurons. How, uh, meanwhile, the functional relationship between this SCN and the hyperkeratinergic system is excitatory. Another thing that you need to know is a uh, melatonin. So melatonin is a hormone that produced by the pineal gland in response to the signals from the SCN. So means that melatonin release based on the circadian rhythm. So it will be released during the night time, a few hours before you sleep, and it will peak around midnight. However, the level of melatonin will gradually decline until the morning when wakefulness is resolved. The blue light about uh, 400 to 525 nanometer uh, nano wavelength emitted from the screen is responsible to inhibit the melatonin release to a greater degree than other wavelength. So that's why there are uh, one of the disadvantages using your smartphone during at night time, when you especially during your uh, you switch off your uh, light, the light screen time make it more difficult for you to fall asleep.